Hi artisans, how are you? Hope you're having a glorious day and are ready to be inspired. Before we move forward with the brilliant Amala Sams, my name's Carly Duff and of course I am lead demonstrator for the beautiful Imala range. Um, if you don't know who Imala are, what they are is a fusion of myself and Tony Derrick. Um, also, while you're here, please hit the subscribe button purely because then you can keep up to date with the whole of the network that we have. Don't forget as well to pop along to the Sam's By Me website and leave a comment. I love reading your comments. If you've got any questions about any of the items that I'm using, then just let me know and I will help you out. Now the stamp that I'm highlighting today, oh it's a bit of a firm favourite of mine, this is the Watermill. Now I have searched high and low for a stamp like this and never found one. The only one that I did find was many many years ago and it was tiny, absolutely tiny. I wanted a Watermill that was a full focus of a card. So whether you're using it scrapbooking and I love the fact as well that you can send a Watermill for so many occasions. It's genderless, it's male and female which is fabulous. And of course look at the iconic size. It's A5 and it is a beautiful, absolutely stunning stamp that will be a firm favourite on your craft table. So today we are going to be using the watermill. I'm going to show you how to paint this as well. Really, really simple. But let's get stamping. I'm using my Eureka because it is the best platform. I'm going to pick up this stamp. Now you may have seen as well, you can stamp onto fabric, which is an absolute dream. So if you love doing your embroidery work, try and incorporate this into it. It works really, really well. I'm using all purpose ink. And I'm just going straight on to this beautiful watermill. If you pop along and have a look at some of our other videos, I did share a tutorial um, using the autumn leaves with this as the main focal point on the front on acetate, and it works a dream. Really, really does. So I'm just stamping away. Now I'm going onto a watercolour card, so I may need to do a couple of little layers of black stamping just to get that really crisp. But let's have a look. Obviously, I'm using my magnets as well to keep my card into position. But you can see just some of it is just a tiny bit not crisp enough. So I'm just going to double layer that ink onto the stamp. Really nice. And just over ink it again. So by having my magnets into position, it just keeps it perfectly still, my paper. If you do struggle with applying pressure, use a brayer as well over that. That will work a dream. See how much crisper that design is. So now let's start painting. As you know, I use my Eureka as my platform as well as my workspace. It's just easy. Really, really simple. So I'm going to be using my Himi watercolour palette, which I love. <laughs> but you could use goosh paints if you prefer as well as well. So I'm going in now. Now first of all I just want a bit of a wash really so I'm going to go in with my okra, take it to the side, add water, rotate your brush as you go round and then what we're going to do is we're just going to get some colour on. Now if you haven't used an all-purpose ink you will need to heat set this before you start painting. It's quite warm in here, so I'm quite lucky that it's started to dry already. I'm going to come down, and these areas, these little lined areas, I quite often go on about these. These are your shading areas. So you always place your darker colours within that. I'm going straight from the palette as well, so not a lot of water on my brush, but a lot of pigment. I'm just going to carry on. Filling in them spaces. Now, isn't it funny? But I wonder if you're thinking the same. Do you love watching paint dry? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's true. I love watching other people paint as well. It's absolutely brilliant. So I hope that you are feeling the same way. It is very, very relaxing. I mean, I love painting anyway. Art is therapy for me personally and many, many other people. And why not? Having this sort of imagery 
makes it so easy to be an artist because now you're doing all of the, the difference, the colouring, the detail. It just makes such a difference. So I'm just going to wet my brush now, and I'm, but now I'm going to really, really add lots and lots of water to my brush, and then I'm just simply dragging that colour out from them edges to fill in the centres of the panel. Obviously, if you are using watercolour paper, it makes a massive difference to your shading. You're just dragging that colour around really, really simply. Remember that it will dry lighter than what it is. So sometimes I like to let it dry, have a little sit back, look at it, then decide from that what I need to do. A bit more water, and I drag that colour from the outside into the centre. So now I'm going to go into my dark sort of chocolatey colour. Mix that exactly in the same place where you mixed. Let me move that out of the way. Exactly the same position where we mixed that okra before. So you're going to pick up on that okra as well as the darker colours. And we're just going to add a little bit more shading along some of these layers here. Also going to go into doing the roof. Now this is a cr cranky old roof, you can see, but beautiful. And there actually is, if you look at the detail, there is actually a window in there, which is fabulous. So I'm just going to fill that colour through the edge. So again, using the colours that I have. more and more layering. Have a little bit of that ready brown now as well. And this is where you can start really adding in multiple different layers. So I've got a roof there. I'm going to pull that colour away. Always try and paint in the direction of the the item that you are painting, if you know what I mean, because what that does is it, it sort of gives it that feel before you even start. I'm going to take this chocolate red, bring it down. Nice and easy. Now, I didn't wash my brush there. I've gone straight into the okra. So within this brush now, I have that really dark ready brown as well as the okra on the top. And you can just start filling in them panels. Now you may be able to hear my brush. It is very dry, but this just makes such a difference. Filling that colour in. Now I'm going to go into the water and in the centre of that colour, just blend it out. So nice and simple. Now it's completely up to you, obviously. This could be an imaginary house. This could be a house that you know that lives down the road. That's what's so brilliant about painting is that it could be a magical unicorn house if you wanted. It all depends on the colour tones that you are using within your project. So now I'm just doing, um, oh, what they called like the rafters, I suppose. Just filling in that detail. And of course, I'm using my number five brush, which is the lovely small one with the beautiful tape in it. This is my favourite, but some people prefer flat brushes. But I just like how you can really get in. And it, it also tidies up really easy as well, which is nice. So, I mean, tidying up your painting, obviously. <laughs> the edges. You can get right in. So I've had a few asks about this stamp and how to paint it. 
So this is the choice time to save this video and then you will always have it to hand. I'm just coming over more of the detail now. Now I'm going to make myself a really nice grey. I'm going to pick up a tad of black and loads and loads of white. Add that in there. And this will be our lovely stone colour. So I'm just going to take this through every single piece. Because it's always a little bit random, isn't it? Then I'm going to go into that chocolate. And you'll notice I just wet the tip. I didn't clean the brush. So now I can go back in. Add more layers. Start pulling out some of this colour. So I rinse my brush into the okra and we're just sort of dotting the colours between here and there. We're going to do exactly the same on this panel. So if you break it down into different panels, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going into that grey. Make sure you rotate the brush to get that heavy wet piece that will be on the inside of the brush. Now I'll just pick up that brown. You can create the most beautiful, absolutely stunning walls. So this wall comes around here, but it's partial of the wall. You're not getting all of the wall here because we've got some foliage as well. You can do quite loose painting around that area. So as that's drying, I'm going to go onto my colour, onto the actual water wheel now. And I've mixed together that really warm brown with okra. Make sure you get the rims because they're the, the bits that if you miss them, it really shows. So we're just pulling that colour around. Go. Try and get a bit lighter as you go towards the distance. Now I'm going into a tad of blue. I'm just going to pull this up here, nice and simple. Touch of white in there as well, but it has got a little bit of grey. Just a little. And I'm just going to exaggerate that colour out. You can see there nice and neatly. Doesn't have to be vibrant, it just needs to be enough to recognize what we're doing. You can add flips of it onto your wheel as well. This works quite nicely. I go back into that gray and it all depends on how you like to paint. Some people prefer to paint in layers. Some people prefer to paint all one color at once. I know I quite often do that. And I'm gonna have a little tad of brown. Right in those layers. Nice and easy. Bit of okra, and you can just keep dotting your colours around till you find the perfect blend for yourself. You can see where that's starting to darken already. So I'm just going to go back in with a bit more colour. A little bit of water and just blend their mid tones together. And back into here. And this is where you can really start enjoying yourself with the scene. So, again, a little bit of water, just drag that colour from each side and colour the centre. Lovely. I'm going to go into a touch of green now. This is my mid green. And I'm just going to add quite sporadically just around the edges. This is quite loose as well, quite watery. And I'm just bringing this lighter up first of all. And then I'm going to go into my darker green. And we're just going to stipple it slightly. Now I am going to be tearing this before I pop it onto my card. 
So I don't need to completely fulfill the whole of it. Just adding in a bit more detail, blending it away. just brings it to life. I mean, it looks absolutely exquisite in monochrome, but to be able to colour it simply and easily is a whole new level. So now I'm just going to grab a little bit of okra, a little bit of grey, fill in them areas, go back over the areas that obviously have dried quite a bit and they need a little bit more colour on them. Nice and easy. So use that water as well to really emphasise and blend that colour out. This is why you need good quality watercolour card because that is half your uh, battle, I expect. With watercolour in. Lovely. So I'm just going to heat set this now, dry it off a bit. And it's super achievable. Now, if you've never done any watercolour work, I do suggest that maybe you emboss it first of all because what that does is it just encapsulates it so then it's not going to be going everywhere. You can very, very simply just um, work with it. So now I've got a white gel pen here. I'm just checking that it's working. That one seems not to be. I'll grab this one. Now will this one work? We shall see. And all I'm doing is just adding a few choice highlights just on the water wheel, a little bit on that window so it brings it more into the foreground rather than being lost in there. You can also put highlights on whatever you like really, that's the beauty of it. I've just seen a tiny little tad that I'm just going to pick up with a little bit of okra and it's just that very light area there. Perfect. So heat set again. and we shall start on our base card. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rip this, but rip it towards you because then you get that beautiful soft watercolor layer where it's pressed cardstock, you get that gorgeous edge. So it makes a really, really big difference. And then we're just gonna pull it around the areas that we've been painting. If there is areas left behind that you think, oh, it still needs a bit of color, don't worry, it's really, really easy and I will show you how right now. So I'm going to take a much thicker white, uh, wide brush now and I'm actually just going to add water to them white areas. And I'm just going to go back in to my Himmy paints and I'm simply going to pick up, let's see if I've got some, I've got a bit of blue there, I'll use that. And we're just going to sort of stipple it in but then drag it out because it's wet already, it absorbs the colour. And you can go as light or as dark as you like with this. It could make a really nice sort of wash if you like. But texture is beautiful, I love it. Absolutely love it. So now I'm going to come down, just move around, and I'm just going to use water with that colour detail that I've got there already. I just don't want to mix into that colour detail. That the same at the bottom. And you're stippling it. So you're really fluffing up them textures and grabbing that detail in. Again, the blue, because that's already started to dry. I'm going to add a bit more.
So I'm just going to heat set that now. So that will be dry. Lovely. Just noticed I'll just take that edge off as well. So always tear towards you. Make sure that you achieve maximum ripping. So there we go. So now I'm going to come over to my main card. I'm using the beautiful coincidental prestige papers. They are available on the website absolutely stunning and i'm going to mix in just a couple of little stencils that i'm going to use um i'm thinking that i'm probably going to use the doily the doily st um, stencil is incredible absolutely beautiful and this is a mala exclusive as well and you get that fabulous edge on there which is really really cool so now i'm just going to grab some inks I'm going to go on with a little bit of brown, so I'm just going to tap off my excess onto there. And I'm just going to start very lightly in a corner. And you can see, even though it's a decorative paper, it works a dream. It really does. It just gives you beautiful layers, textures. So again, just take off your excess. And you can always just pick that up from there as well if you're on a glass mat. Beautiful. So also what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to crinkle this edge slightly. Really easy. If you just pull it up and then squish it, then you'll get your rips and your bends. It's gorgeous quality cardstock. So you know that what you are getting is fabulous. Again, just push, push along, crinkle it. This is how you can really distress things. Or you can have it neat, it's completely up to you. I totally understand that we're all very different. But you know me, I do love a bit of vintage. I'm gonna roll that edge now. This one, again, crinkle it. And already that looks seriously distressed. So I'm going to come onto my card. And again, I'm going to be using that beautiful stencil. And what I'm doing is I'm building up the colour and smoothing it away. Which is that. So again, smooth, smooth, smooth. This is another way that if you are, um, you haven't got the right colour cards, Dr. Matt, this is a great way of how to incorporate and make your white cards, Dr. Matt, because now you're adding the key colour from the design onto your base. So you're just going to fill it in until it's exactly how you want it. Lovely. I'm also going to take my ink straight from ink pad, just wipe it around the edge. Try not to push, it's more of a wipe. Because if you do push, you tend to get more of a thicker line. There we go. And you can actually, from ink pad as well, just go straight on. And just build colour up in the corners as a distressed look. Perfect. So now I'm going to come down, I'm going to add this gorgeous background paper. I'm going to use the tape runner onto my base card. It can be straight, it can be skew if it's completely up to you. 
And then also what I've done is I've taken some choice pieces that I've already very easily just ribs. And what we're gonna do is add a little bit of wet glue to the reverse of them. But I'm only gonna glue them in the center. Don't put your glue all the way round. And we're gonna go over these layers now and glue them on. So exactly the same, I'm just gonna tap this into the glue. There's that layer, a bit more, that over three layers there. And then of course, this little bit down the bottom. Now, I'm using a really quick drying glue so I can get moving a little bit straight away. But what you need to do now is where we've just glued the centers, is we're gonna pick up them edges from the rip detail. So remember, tear it towards you exactly how we did before. And this just creates beautiful textured layers. <gasps> Works fabulous on mixed media. If you've glued it too much, just push, get your nails underneath and just push that layer up. And again, just beautiful. There we go, a little bit of free inking just on them edges that we've curled up. This just ties everything together. Then I'm gonna come over to that beautiful um, piece that we've painted already. And I'm very simply taking that same brown that I was adding for the stencil and I'm just coming around the edges. So you don't need to add any more ink onto it. You just use what's there. I'm gonna come back with my stencil. And again, not adding any ink, using the ink that I've left on my stencil. Just to tie it together. There we go. So then again, I'm going to grab some foam pads, pop this into the center, and then we're going to work on the sentiment. The sentiment that comes with this, you actually get two sentiments that come with this beautiful water mill. So you can really go to town using it. I'm simply just placing that in the center, pop that to a side. And the sentiment I've decided to choose for this one is there is beauty in simplicity. Absolutely stunning. And this time I'm going to do it slightly different. I'm going to pick up that ink. I'm going to go on with brown. First of all. Just stamp. Gonna grab my spray water. I do prefer a finer spray. Let's grab a bigger spray because that wasn't going anywhere. Then we're just gonna use that heat set and I'm not gonna move this. It's just to loosen some of the ink that we've put on there already. Now I'm not cleaning my stamp, I've still got that brown on there, but I'm gonna go back on with the black. So we're going over the top. Now we've got that double layer ink in, beautiful. And again, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that brown using my stencil. Here we go. And you don't need too much. That's what's really, really cool about these is that you can just have choice little accent areas and then the rest you're just going to use your ink pad to blend away. So around that edge. Now 
There we go. And this one we're just going to crinkle slightly. You can actually screw it up and then iron it again after. That gives you really nice designs on it. And now I'm just going to add this to my piece of decorative paper and I'm slightly going to offset it so it's a bit skew with. A foam pad to go on the reverse of that. And then there we go. A little bit different, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is, one, to paint the detail, but also to create something a little bit vintage, a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed your inspiration today using the beautiful watermill. It's a beautiful choice stamp that can be used for so many different occasions. Remember, I've used the stencils and, of course, the quintessential prestige collection of papers from Amala. Thank you for joining me. I will see you next time. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye.